AM 1300 WMEL. Get ready, Space Coast. On Sunday, August 9th, AM 1300 WMEL becomes AM 1060 WMEL. That's Sunday, August 9th. The Talk to Me Station, AM 1060 WMEL, will blanket the entire Space Coast with a 50,000-watt signal, bringing you all of your favorite news, talk, and sports programming more clearly than ever before. Remember, on Sunday, August 9th, make the switch to AM 1060 WMEL. The Talk to Me Station, AM 1060 WMEL. The views expressed on the following program are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and are not necessarily those of WML staff, management, or advertisers. Welcome to Helping Seniors of Brevard. My name is Kay Kaiser, sitting in today for Joe Steckler. And we're proud to be part of having a great opportunity to be on the air. I'm going to share with my guest. Bill Johnson, an elder law attorney, will be introducing to him. But first, let me give a shout out to our sponsors who have made Helping Seniors of Brevard possible. Atlantic Shores Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, Barbara McIntyre, who's a home equity retirement specialist, Canadian Meds of Melbourne, where you can save a tremendous amount on your prescriptions, Courtney and Braswell Financial Group, Ebony News Today. Gentiva Home Health, Hometown News, Levin Home Care Nurse Registry, Peaceful Beach Mediation, Senior Scene Magazine. And we'll pick up on our second part of our program, the other partners that have made Helping Seniors of Brevard possible to help continue educating our listening audience and people who read our printed material in Senior Scene Magazine, Hometown News, Ebony News Today, and Spotlight Magazine. But I'd like to start off in, in, in giving a, uh, two numbers here because Bill Johnson, an elder law attorney, has a great deal of knowledge and experience and professionalism when it comes to elder law issues and questions. So if any of our callers would like to pose a question to Mr. Johnson, by all means, call 631-1300. And for those who are needing assistance finding appropriate resources, I invite you to call Helping Seniors of Brevard. That is 321-473-7770. And we'll do our best to put you in touch with the appropriate resources that you may be looking for. So without further ado, welcome, Bill Johnson. Good afternoon. <laughs> I think, you know, a lot of people don't understand, and I know that you recently did an article in our newsletter regarding the fact that um, Florida passed recently guardianship legislation. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, back in uh, June of, well, actually, this legislative session, mm-hmm. uh, Florida uh, passed some legislation that went effective July 1st. That legislation was championed by Representative Pasadoma Mm -hmm. from over in uh, Collier County, and it dealt mainly with uh, putting some safeguards into the guardianship statutes based on some uh, perceived needs or tweaking, uh, mainly in response to uh, concerns coming out of the South Florida area Mm -hmm. as well as the uh, St. Petersburg area. Uh, okay. There was a series of articles that were done in the St. Petersburg Times, and then there was uh, an article or a series of articles done in the New Times, uh, which deals with South Florida about guardianship and abuses and, you know, the horror stories of this. And yeah. so they addressed at that time going in and making some changes and putting some more safeguards in, and that law became effective July 1st. So right now we're under that st- new statute okay those new changes and then um there is going to be some proposed legislation coming up that would involve licensing professional guardians and we expect to see that come through this uh fall most people wow. don't know but the legislative session begins very early next year uh-huh. uh, starts in january interesting and we're used yeah. to seeing it start uh usually in March. Wow. So uh, they will actually be having all the committee meetings uh, this fall and winter. And okay. subsequently, um, things are already hopping due to that schedule. Good. Well, that's, I'm sure, to the benefit. But, you know, a lot of people may be listening in here and don't understand when 
or maybe even why would you even need a guardianship, Bill Johnson? Well, basically, if you're incapacitated Mm -hmm. and we have to go to court to have you legally declared incapacitated, that is uh, how we do the... um, the process is called guardianship. Okay. So we file a petition to have you declared incapacitated, and we also file a petition for the appointment of a guardian. Um, then the court will send out a three-member examining committee composed of a doctor and two other medical professionals to okay. go out to the alleged incapacitated person's house, and they do an evaluation, and they report back to the court whether the person's partially, totally, or not at all incapacitated. Okay. The court also will appoint an attorney to represent the alleged incapacitated person Uh just to make sure they're not being railroaded through the system. All right, good. Um, If the examining committee comes back and says the person's partially or totally incapacitated, then uh, we have a a two-step hearing. Mm -hmm. First part of it is dealing with the issue of capacity, and then the second part would be the appointment of a guardian okay. to take those rights that the person can't uh, manage, like managing finances, health care, things like that. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So you have a whole process there that uh, you can go by and get appointed as a guardian. A lot of times people will do certain documents, like a durable power of attorney or a health care right. surrogate, right. where they ahead of time name who they want to manage their finances and health care. Uh, So we don't have to go to court. Right. And that's ultimately the goal for many families. They don't want to have to go through that process if they had planned that prior to the situation. Well, guardianship's very invasive. You know, you're talking about going in, stripping rights away from somebody and placing them with somebody else. Right. And Uh, intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, taking control over somebody else. It's also very expensive. You know, a bare bones guardianship in Brevard's running somewhere around eight thousand dollars. Wow! So you know, if you do the power of attorney, healthcare surrogate, mm-hmm. usually we can avoid that. However, sometimes we still need to do a guardianship. Say we have somebody in a gray area of capacity, and you know they, you know, you go to their house and right. they're. They got the the ten animals going, fur mm-hmm. everywhere, and living in horrible conditions. Right. But yet they don't have any insight and can't see their own situation, and and won't cooperate with the power of attorney or the healthcare circuit. Right. Sometimes then we still need to go in, or sometimes you know maybe the person you named as the power of attorney is stealing from you. And so, and doesn't that come up sometimes? Oh, that yes. comes up quite a quite a lot. You know, I I get so many calls from um, callers saying that, you know, I'm concerned. I had one just even yesterday that was referred to me about a woman who um, who basically her son and her grandson are literally taking advantage and taking her money. And um, unfortunately, the woman is, is not mentally clear to understand the whole situation and is feeling like, okay, I'm just going to let it go. But that's not the situation, and that's not how it should be handled. Correct. So. Uh, the Department of Children and Families has a hotline, 1-800-96-ABUSE. And that is a uh, hotline you can call, and you can leave an anonymous, uh, basically, tip or you know concern right Right. and then they'll send out an investigator to check out what's going on at the house and that's really important i want to repeat that number you said it was 1-800-96-ABUSE so you can remain anonymous when you make that call but if you have a concern about someone that you feel is being quote taken advantage of and yet has not taken the the rightful steps to really have proper uh, situation intact then by all means, I, d- I highly recommend call. Also, uh, uh, not last year, but the year before, the legislature passed a new and enhanced exploitation statute. Uh-huh. And, of course, you know, if somebody is stealing from somebody, <laughs> right. you can always call the police. Yes, absolutely. It's a crime. So It is. It is a crime. I can remember, you know, we're, get, we're getting ready to um, celebrate our first year anniversary and actually opening up an office um, August 11th. And basically some of the first calls that I had were from people who were saying that, you know, um, 
I lost my husband. I found a gal to come in, and she was pregnant at the time, and she had no real experience in, in health care and et cetera. turned out that she was taking her for some $2,400 a month and living in this woman's home. And so the lady was concerned, what do I do, where do I go, and everything. So, you know, I know Joe and I have always talked on the air about, you know, taking – um, the right steps to make sure that people are not scammed and taken advantage of. And um, Bill Johnson here, who's a very high esteemed elder law attorney, can really help direct you. And I believe that you offer free consultations. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. We do. So don't hesitate to call if you, um, Bill, why don't you shout out your telephone number here for our listening audience? Okay. My uh, office number is 321. 321- Two five three, one six six seven. Okay, and if you didn't write that down, um, you can always call Helping Seniors Abroad at four seven three seven 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 zero, and I will be glad to give you that number as well. So, um, just a reminder too, you know, sometimes people want to maybe have a question to call in when they hear a particular subject on the radio. Here, you don't have to even give us your name, but if you do have, if you do have a question to ask Bill Johnson, by all means, call six three one thirteen hundred, and I'm sure he'll field your questions and give you some proper answers as well. Well, you know, you talked briefly, Bill, about exploitation cases. How often do you see this in your practice? Uh, Quite often. We see those kind of cases all the time. Okay. Well, you know, as the... Number one exploiter of the elderly is family. Yeah. That's that's what I've heard many times, too. And unfortunately, when somebody gets involved in taking care of the parent and who may be incapacitated to really react on their own and so forth, I hate to say it, but a lot of problems do result from the family members. And there shouldn't be that feuding. There should be some amicable solutions to solve that problem. Wouldn't you agree, Bill? I would agree with that. Okay. Well, why do you feel that the alleged incapacitated person get their own attorney prior to this? Well, uh, you have a right to counsel, so you can go with a court-appointed attorney, or you could hire your own attorney if you wanted to. Okay. If you uh, have the wherewithal to do so. Well, and that's <laughs> it, the, and yeah. that's it's all about. It boils down to all about planning ahead. Correct. And so many people. Even the calls that I get, they're in a crisis situation because they haven't considered long-term care, uh, what's going to happen. They just haven't really dotted the I's and crossed the T's to plan for the future. And unfortunately, they find themselves panicky. Now what do I do? Where do I go? And everything. And now the family's fighting and, you know, saying, I want this asset. I want this asset. Don't give him the car. I want the car. And all this could have been avoided if just take the time to really sit down and put together a plan and, and talk to a person like Bill Johnson who can help you avoid some very serious problems in the future. I would agree with that. Uh, It's amazing how many times people are fighting over the assets before somebody's passed on. That's true. That's absolutely true. And it... It's a shame it should it should even happen to begin with. I mean, this is a time of sorrow and and sadness that you've lost a loved, a loved one, but yet many of the family members are just looking at what do I get out of it and being greedy, if I can be so blunt, you know. But unfortunately, you know, that happens, and, you know, it's important to really plan ahead. I can't stress that enough. Bill Johnson, who gets to be on the examining committee, per se? Well, the... Basically, the judges have a list of approved people. They have to go through some training. Mm -hmm. uh, And uh, basically, that consists of knowing how to write the reports up and and things like that. Um, And then the uh, judges have uh, a list of people that they can put on the committees. Okay. They're always looking for more people. So if you're you're one of those uh, types who think you'd be good at that and you have a... Uh, social worker or medical or nursing background uh, background Mm -hmm. Uh, they are looking for people to do those jobs you know it just occurred to me we get so many people that move from other states to florida if they had a guardianship done in another state and now they're in florida is that still effective well, they can transfer the guardianship from that state to this state okay okay so yeah you should once you 
have somebody you're guardian for and you're moving them with you out of state. Right. Not only should you get the permission of the court where you are, but then you should reestablish guardianship in the new jurisdiction. Okay. And that makes sense, you know, because we just do have so many, you know, lately the trend is a lot of the snowbirds have decided that, hey, this is such a haven here in, in Brevard County. I think I'm and it's a best kept secret too in Florida. I, 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 so, I'm telling you, if more people knew about it. We'd, we'd be inundated with more from the Midwest and the Northeast and all around the country. But um, so many people come to Florida thinking that, you know, okay, everything's in place. But, you know, these are key things that I think that need to to be done and again it's all about planning so don't assume things are going to be as they were from where you were correct okay correct. right did i did i say that right yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. is the examining committee's report bill johnson the last word on an individual's incapacity not necessarily uh you could have a split in the examining committee or they could come back and say that the person's partially incapacitated. Okay. But that is just evidence of incapacity. Right. Uh, so you are free to go, you know, see your own psychiatrist, psychologist, neurologist, and present evidence whether or not you think uh, you are incapacitated and mm-hmm. present that uh, during the incapacity part of the, the hearing. Okay. So basically the process is they have a uh, psychological assessment, a physical assessment. Just let's review that for just a moment. What actually goes, you know, to determine whether or not someone is truly incapacitated? Well, they actually have a form that they go out and they go through and they do assess the physical and mental capacity and whether or not they think a guardianship is needed for an individual. Okay. Um, And then the three examining committee members, they all do their own reports, and then they get together and file a comprehensive report. Okay. And uh, that's where they come out as a committee and say specifically whether or not they think someone is capable of doing certain things, like maybe voting or traveling or you know, uh, managing their finances, managing their health care, determining right. where they live, all these kinds of issues. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And again, if anybody would like to pose a question to Bill Johnson here today on today's program, please dial 631-1300. You don't have to say your name. But I think this is truly important information that a lot of people need to know about. And it's sometimes a little confusing to be bottom line you know i learn something every single day and there's not a week that goes by where i don't acquire yet another resource but uh, bill johnson is an extremely intelligent professional elder law attorney and i recommend him highly if you have any questions feel free to call him um shout your number out again here if you will uh 253-1667 okay perfect. area code 321 okay Wonderful. Um, explain to the audience, if you would, Bill, when is it appropriate to have a professional guardian or even the public guardian appointed? Well, let's say we have a individual who doesn't have any family. Okay. And we, we get those. And that's we, common here. Yeah, yeah. We, we get people who outlive all their relatives. We right. get people who just don't have anybody else. And... Um, If there are certainly assets available, uh, they can get a a professional guardian who will take over their case uh, generally for the rest of their life, even after the assets run out. Um, What qualifies a professional guardian? Okay. Professional guardians (laughs) have to go through a course. It's a 40-hour course. They have to be fingerprinted and pass a criminal background check. They have to have level a, two. Yeah. Okay. And they have to have a credit report, and they get fingerprinted, and they have to post a bond. Okay. And um, there are a few other things. They get basically uh, licensed by the state. Okay. So, um, well, that that's kind of a misnomer. They don't really get licensed by the state, but they get approved. They get and there's approved. a statute that says everything they okay. have to comply with. But it's not particularly a license per se. Correct. Okay. And that's what I was talking about. It's yeah. going to be proposed is a, now a license. With the new legislative. Yeah. It's kind of almost that you, right now, it's uh, kind of a, a stamp that you have been 
met the requirements. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, how does one go about finding a professional guardian? Um, you can simply Google it. Okay. <laughs> there are plenty of them out there. Right. Um, there are, there's a list that's kept at the courthouse. Okay, uh, there so, you go. Uh, the courthouse would have a list of that. Mm-hmm. They are under the auspices of, <laughs> I believe... It is the Department of Elder Affairs. I believe you're right on that, too. Yeah, I've seen that. that has yes. a list of uh, currently uh, current Approved. Guardians. Yeah, approved Approved, guardians. right. Yeah, okay. Approved guardians. Well, interesting. You know, so just listening in what the, our discussion is so far, you know, there's a lot to learn when it comes to guardianship and so forth, and we're going to be talking more in our second part of our program. So, and we talk... I'm talking today. My name is Kay Kaiser, sitting in with our famous Joe Steckler, who is going, who's out of town today. And it's my pleasure to be speaking with Bill Johnson, elder law attorney here on the air as well. So stay tuned. We're going to be giving you a lot more information as we go on into our second half. And feel free to call us at 631-1300 if you have a question. Bill will be happy to answer that. And if you want to call the office and get more information, Call 473-7770. So stay with us, and we'll continue this discussion in our second half. Thank you. AM 1300 WMEL. Get ready, Space Coast. On Sunday, August 9th, AM 1300 WMEL becomes AM 1060 WMEL. That's Sunday, August 9th. The Talk to Me station, AM 1060 WMEL, will blanket the entire Space Coast with a 50,000-watt signal, bringing you all of your favorite news, talk, and sports programming more clearly than ever before. Remember, on Sunday, August 9th, make the switch to AM 1060 WMEL. The Talk to Me station, AM 1060 WMEL. Welcome back to the second part of Helping Seniors, the radio arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard. This is Kay Kaiser in today for our famous Joe Steckler, which I'm sitting with Bill Johnson in our studio here today at AMWMEL, soon to become AM1060 with boosting their signals and wattage ten times the amount, so we'll cover even more region. But Bill Johnson's our guest today, and before I say any more and go into our other list of partners that have helped helping seniors at Brevard, I want to say something special. If Joe Seckler is listening to this program today, there is nobody in higher esteem, in my estimation, and the privilege of working for his aspiration and inspiration and compassion and thinking ahead of trying to form a nonprofit, which we'll be celebrating opening our office in, here in, in another week, has been tremendous. And the amount of calls that I personally have taken, um, even acting primarily as a case manager with over 500 callers, and many of those I may have talked to six dozen times, but... Joe Steckler had a vision to help all seniors in Brevard, and I know that he's done the radio show with you, Bill Johnson, for a number of years, and I think you might even like to add something to that. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I've never met anybody quite as, I guess, relentless <laughs> yes. as Joe. I think that's a pretty good word to describe him in that's his, one, yeah. his advocacy on behalf of the seniors of Brevard County. And uh, it takes all forms, you know, helping seniors of Brevard was uh, part of Joe's vision. Before that, he was Alzheimer's Foundation. That's right. Um, he's talking to legislators all the time. Yes. Uh, advocating through that system. He's talking to foundations, nonprofits, all over the place, and all, as well as businesses. That's for right. profits Exactly. Trying to get them involved in this. So, yeah, I would... I would <laughs> Call him relentless, Joe Steckler. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just wanted to put a positive note on there because without Joe Steckler's inspiration and, and um, commitment, helping seniors at Brevard, I believe, would have never resulted. And it's just my pleasure to be able to work with such a gentleman that has the vision and knowing and changing on what's going on in our own county and helping seniors of Brevard. So I wanted to shout that out a moment, but I also want to give credit to our other partners and Seniors Helping Seniors. It's a mother and daughter team that have seniors actually working for them. So if you need some hands-off help, 
they happen to be there to do those services, and we get a lot of referrals to them. Solid Bite Dental Implants, Dr. Lee Sheldon. Space Coast Center for Independent Living, who's actually donated our office space. We're in the same building as they are over in Rockledge on Haverty Court. Spotlight Magazine, the Eye Institute, the Fountains of Melbourne, the Social Adult Daycare Center, Vitas Innovative Hospice Care of Brevard, Wendy Handy, who's a new partner, sales associate for Dale Sorensen Real Estate, Weiderman Malik, public attorneys, and William Johnson, of course, sitting right here in the studio. WMAL AM 1300, soon on Sunday, will be 1060 Radio. Rencare Medical Monitoring, that's the medical monitoring device, and they've got a pill dispensing monitoring system that I highly recommend that will keep a lot of seniors and people out of assisted living if they need help and reminding to get their medications on time. And lastly, Wustov Health Systems. So thanks to everyone for being part of helping seniors of Brevard, and we continue to grow and help more seniors. And with that, I want to welcome on our second half of the program today, Bill Johnson, elder law attorney. Uh, if you have a question you would like to ask Bill, you don't have to say your name. Feel free to call into the station at 631-1300. If you need help finding resources, call me at the office, K Kaiser, 473-7770. I would like to add something from the first half. You, you go right ahead. How you Absolutely. go ahead. And, you know, there is a list of professional guardians kept by the state. Okay. But also here in Brevard County, we have two um, associations. Ah. We have the Space Coast Guardianship Association. All right. Um, and they meet once a month mm-hmm. um, down at uh, Amici's okay. in the uh, Century area. And then we have the uh, Space Coast chapter of the Florida State Guardianship Association. Oh, wow. Okay. And they are affiliated with the statewide uh, Florida State Guardianship Association, obviously. Right. Uh-huh. And uh, they meet once a month as well. I think they're changing locations right now. Okay. So there are two groups. If you want to get involved, uh, you know, go to one of those meetings. Uh, That'd buy be lunch interesting. And, yeah, you can hear the speaker and meet everybody who does, works in this field. And, yeah. Um, that's good. another good... Uh, good way of meeting up people. Good point, Bill. Thank you for sharing that with our listening audience here today. You know, we discussed, I think, briefly just the fact that so many people, when it comes to settling an estate or the guardianship and the family are not getting along and fighting, you know, basic, right. basically fighting. Um, what really happens if families don't agree or who is to be appointed the guardian in that case? Well, sometimes the judge intervenes and appoints a professional. If he doesn't uh-huh. think one side or the other of the family is going to do right by the other side, uh-huh. um, you know, sometimes we get people barring people from visiting or, yeah. you know, uh, mismanaging the health care or the finances. And the two sides, you know, neither of them's better than the other. Right. Sometimes the judge will appoint a professional instead of a family member. The statute does give preference to family, right. but sometimes that's not a possibility. So uh, uh, that's uh, another role that professionals play in addition to uh, representing somebody who doesn't have anybody. Right. Uh, there is also, um, I forgot to mention, a office of public guardian. Uh-huh. So if okay. you have somebody who is indigent and, uh-huh. and needs a guardian, right. that's their job. And they come in and can be the guardian for that person. Um, There is a waiting list for that, however. That's interesting. uh, Okay. They've got uh, more more clients than they can handle. They can handle at this point. Wow. Well, you know, with so many people that do actually end up moving to Florida from another state and everything, and and like you say, that um, maybe they don't have any family here. They don't have anyone close to them. So that's where you would advise, you know, looking into getting a professional guardian to take well, over. Well, a professional guardian usually gets involved sometimes without, you know, somebody has out-of-state family right. who can't be here. Yeah. And so they'll let the professional become the guardian, mm-hmm. and then they can interact with the guardian long distance, and the guardian can handle 
that because, as you know and I know, right. most people moved here from somewhere That's else. That's right. <laughs> A good chunk of them did. And subsequently, you know, their family is somewhere else. Right. And subsequently, uh, that makes it kind of hard to help somebody long distance. Right. I, I get so many calls from uh, women, particularly, who have lost their husband, and, and they're all alone. Um, you know, what do I do? Where do I go? Um, so it's it's really important. And this is one of the mission statements of helping seniors of Brevar because this is why we do the radio. This is why we do the print and the TV programs and everything because our purpose, too, besides when you call us for a resource, is to help educate. It's, let me tell you something. Even Joe has made calls where he's gotten frustrated and he's been in the elder system for 25 plus years and can't get a straight answer. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine, you know, it's hard for the typical average citizen to truly navigate the elder system. It's like, it's a maze. (laughs) It's actually a maze. Wouldn't you agree, Bill? I I would uh, (laughs) strongly agree with that. And it's worthwhile getting somebody involved who knows how to navigate that maze in addition to an elder law attorney who can help you with that, there are uh, folks out there called geriatric case managers right. who do serve a very good function of helping people navigate the uh, benefits and health care maze that usually surrounds some sort of long-term care or incapacity event. Well, you know, you have a fantastic booklet that you produced. It's called the Florida Long-Term Care and Nursing Home Answer Book. You put this together, and I think it's excellently written and very comprehensive so that anyone picking it up can truly, you know, look at it and say, wow, I didn't know about that. And I, I, I'm just breezing through it today. And your last real article here that you put in the booklet was on guardianship. Right. So, so you help people to kind of navigate a little bit by learning more about nursing home care, the realities of long-term care, um, everything from adult daycare to assisted living to home health care agencies, uh, the truth about Medicare even. People are just not in the knowledgeable aspect of understanding so many things, and you have put it down in just a really easy to understand format so if anybody would like to obtain this booklet which i highly recommend um because i've given out my office to anybody that comes in would you please call bill johnson and your telephone number is again yeah area code three two one two five three one six six seven Okay. It, he's done an, he's really, folks, he's done an excellent job in putting together this little booklet. I, I think that it's something that everybody who is a senior really should have because it does answer a lot of questions. And again, this is what we try to do is to help educate our seniors and their caretakers so that you get the right information and not waiting till the last minute in a crisis. Now what do I do? And and that's, you know, 90% of what I deal with when I deal with long-term care issues is people in crisis. And again, you know, a guardianship really is a crisis situation. If we're having to get, you know, talk about filing guardianship, getting people appointed, you know, usually it's because nobody's done any planning. Well, and that's what I'm going to say. You know, the key to really, well, Information is power. <laughs> Correct. It really is. So, And Joe talks about that again and again. He does. Having knowledge from a good source. Exactly. You can't, can't emphasize that. You know, don't rely on your neighbor who retired from the railroad in New Jersey right. for your medical, <laughs> you know, your medical and financial well-being in your senior years because <laughs> you'll find that you're not getting the right information. I can't tell you how many times people come in my office, tell me their their spouse has had a a stroke and is going to have long-term care, and they're going to lose their house. Right, right. And in Florida, that's not true. Right. The state constitution protects your homestead from creditors' claims. So you're not going to lose your house. Right. But if you're listening to your neighbor from up north... 
they'll tell you, oh, in New York, they took my uh, my uncle's house. <laughs> well, in New York, it's a different set of laws. Right. Every state is different. And that's why I feel it's extremely important because we do get so many people moving into Florida from various states that, you know, what was good in your state may not be applicable here. So, Bill Johnson, thank you for bringing that point up because that really is truly, truly important. I know that we touched on it, but, you know, with the guardianship and everything and the family, but with your experience, disagreements, they probably happen more often than they don't, do they, when it comes They've to guardianship? They've actually increased since I yeah, started yeah, yeah. doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I started doing guardianship uh, work, Usually one of the family would, you know, one of the kids would step up and the rest of the family would rally around them Mm -hmm. and everybody would be happy that somebody had the time to devote to, you know, looking out for mom or dad or whatever. Now what's (laughs) happening is that as soon as mom or dad get incapacitated, there's usually an all-out fight. Everybody lawyers up and we're in guardianship court litigating. Oh, no. And... Uh, you know, the biggest change I think I've seen is, one, we had the big financial downturn. Oh, yeah. And that, a lot of people had to tap into their retirement funds to survive. Sure, I can imagine. Or got wiped out. Right. And subsequently, they are very worried about their future, and they are counting on that inheritance to be able just to make ends meet. Right. And so subsequently... Uh, we're seeing the fight over the control of the assets. You know, usually it boils down to money, and uh, uh, guardianship's no different. Occasionally we get people who fight over care, but that is few and far between. Usually it's about... The money. Correct. The money, the money, the money. And it shouldn't be the time to really be fighting about the money. Correct. Yeah. And it seems in the past, most people or most families would all cooperate. Nowadays, it seems everybody's kind of throwing their hat in the ring and willing to go at it. Wow. So if you have that situation where a guardianship's been filed and right. more than one person wants to be guardian, what we do is we have a trial. And basically, we have a trial to determine who is the fittest person. And, and that's expensive, though. That gets to well, be expensive. Just like any other civil yeah. trial, that can be very expensive. Right. Um, so. And do the family members understand that this is money that they're going to have to spend to, to resolve this pro- you know, problem? Right. Ooh. Yeah. And if you don't succeed in being appointed, uh-huh. guess what? Your attorney's fees aren't paid from the alleged incapacitated uh, money. And it comes so from there. out. Pocket. Yes, you're out all that money. So, which is wow. kind of a good system. You've got to be serious about it. Yeah, definitely. Before you get involved in that and pursue that avenue. You know, that's something that a lot of people need to be aware of. In the fact that, hey, is it really worth all this bickering and fighting over over the money? And then, like I said, <laughs> at the end of the day, the judge may say you don't win and you don't win, and yeah. prevent, appoint a professional. <laughs> As, so, as a result of all of that and all that money spent, guess what? You're out. <laughs> yeah, it could say both of you are out. Yeah. You know, if you sling enough mud at each other that you're both muddy, <laughs> uh, the judge may go with somebody else. Yeah, it's just, and I think that's a very valid point, Bill, the fact that people just think, oh, okay, I'm uh, coming in, I'm going to get that money, and I'm going to fight you and everything, but it seriously, reconsider that. Help your folks get some proper planning so it doesn't result in family members fighting over money or health care or anything else in order to you know, this guardianship. It's so important. And I would suggest get your documents done well in advance. How soon do you recommend they start doing that? Now. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to say yesterday. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no time like the present to have your documents in place. Uh, because if, you know, somebody's getting incapacitated and then you drag them to a lawyer's office oh. and they may or may not have the capacity to sign. Right. And then that may become a whole big issue. And uh, that's another up. whole f- bag of apples that you have to deal with. So it's really important, folks, to do your planning ahead of time. Don't be in a crisis situation where suddenly you're calling Bill Johnson and saying, 
my mother's incapacitated. Now what do I do? And I got a brother I won't talk to. And he's been nasty to me. I haven't talked to him in 15 years or whatever the case may be. So, you know, it doesn't need to be ugly. It just doesn't. Don't you agree, Bill? I would agree with that. Okay, good deal. Usually, you know, that's the ex- the exception to the rule, <laughs> uh, <laughs> at least for the people I see. Um, you know, I'm... You know, there are families that get along perfectly well and yeah. everybody rallies around and, and really has mom or dad's best intentions. Right. Uh, and, and we wish it, it was the majority of that in the, in the situation. But like you said, the opposite is true. It's been on the rise for you with your experience. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's part of the, the problem with retirement funds now. And yeah. nobody has a pension and yeah. there's a lot of financial insecurity about people's future. And, That's major. Uh, th- they're usually counting on that inheritance to be able to survive through their own golden years. That's so. right. And it's just not the same as it was 20 years ago. Right. Let's face it, folks. You know, and then pensions, you know, have kind of gone by the wayside. That used yeah, to be. Back in the 80s, yeah. 30% of Amer- over 30% of Americans had a pension. Right. Today it's less than 3%. Whoa. I didn't realize it was that low today yeah, and then wow. they were relying on 401ks yeah to uh be your pension and uh, the latest statistic i saw is 75 percent of 401ks are underfunded oh boy so you know there you go folks you know it's important to have a good plan. I think that, you know, we had results of a survey coming back here recently that we had a senior advocacy council and we've got a plan that's being, that they should have by now for our county commissioners. But the number one, number two was, number one was edu, or information, needing information. So if you've gotten nothing other than the fact today's show, plan ahead. Don't wait till a crisis situation. Just take the time to sit down and and draw a little outline out. Get your family members involved with you so that everybody's on the same page. It's so important so that you don't have to be in a situation where a disagreement, you know, or fighting and all that comes down to the line or you spend a great deal of money trying to get something solved and you don't get to be a guardianship guardian after all. The court may appoint somebody else, right, Bill Johnson? Correct. Okay, so that education is vital, and if if anyone would like to call me at the office, um, like I say, my resource list is growing daily. I can be reached at 321-473-7770, and if you'd like to contact Bill Johnson, our elder elder law attorney, his number is again? 321-253-1667. Okay. Perfect. Offices in Suntry. You just recently moved, too, didn't yep, you? Yep, yep. 140 Interlocking Road now. Okay, perfect. Okay, I just happened to think of that. So you're not at the old office. You've moved recently. Well, Bill Johnson, I have to tell you, it's been a pleasure to have you on the radio today. And the information, I wish I had your knowledge. <laughs> I'm a little jealous there, but I can't have all of it. So I just try to do my best in, in, in referring people to reputable, ethical business people and organizations ones that we can trust and bill johnson you're at the top of the list there for us oh thank you okay well my hats go off to joe steckler because without him helping seniors wouldn't be here and i want to thank everyone for tuning in and next week be sure to change your dial to am 1060 because as recent are uh, coming up on sunday wmel will now be wmel 1060 so it's just been a pleasure standing in for joe steckler today on helping seniors of brevard uh joe will be back next week and with that said i think that uh, we're just going to keep rolling along and i'm going to put up a little plug in we've got an auction coming up in october for a charity auction so we'll give you more information on that maybe next week in the meantime make it a great day and thanks for listening and thank you bill johnson as a guest you're welcome